Folks, may I have your attention for a few moments, please? Folks, I'm in a position to help you here. Really and truly, if you're concerned about your health, I'm in a position to help you. You see what I have in my hand here? This is soap, pure lemon, coconut, and castile soap with all the good active ingredients in it. And it's good from the sole of your feet to the crown of your head. It's good for burning feet, itching feet, sore feet, hot feet, tired feet, athletic feet, and unusual smelling bad feet, and for eczema on your arm or on your body. Now, this has been handed down from generation to generation. And anything's been handed down from generation to generation, from decade to decade, it evidently must be good. Say, for instance, here, yeah, it's a raining right now. Would well, damn one of you little ladies hand me this box? Eight of one of those, I hand them to me. It ain't gonna bite you. It ain't no copperhead in there. Yes, pick it up. You see, yeah, what I have here, folks, I want you to believe this. Now, you can learn something every day, providing you go to the right place to learn. You see the Indians here? You see, pick up my old medicine here, the cough syrup with poplar buds, sweet gum bark, and wild cherry. How many men out there in 94? Raise your hand. How many men in the 90? Raise your hand. No hand. None, not a one go up. But folks, if you follow old nature ways, you can't go wrong. Nature ways is the best way and the surest way. Mother Nature don't get you far, the time surely will. Now this is here from the beginning of time. Now here's something for ultra-rated stomach, folks, where you're spending a lot of money taking Tums, Roly, Buffin, baking soda, Akasusas, trying to get you rid of the eucalyptus acid and pour it into your stomach. 22 different herbs. Buckthorn, sarsaparilla, wild cherry, fennel leaf, burdock, cascad, genius, your ginseng, your spignant root, your thomas root, and all the good actors and ingredients in it. All you got to do is boil it, boil some water, and drop the bowl into a quart jar and leave it sitting out overnight. There go the eucalyptus acid and poison into your stomach. No more toms, no more baking soda, no more alcazars and you can lay down and rest and have the sweetest dreams it ever was. Listen, folks. Call it homemade save. Didn't have any name, only that. Well, my mother-in-law learned me just when I watched her make it. Then I got to making it myself, and that's been 64 years ago. And I've made it all along through my life. When I needed, I kept it all the time for the children when they was, when they was raising the children. That's what I used for their sores and their burns and things. It'd take two days now for me to make it because I work some two days. But used to be I could have done that in a half a day. Got the bark, scraped it, and made it. Have to have a tree rosum tree turpentine, and mutton's taller, and lard, hog's lard, and all of these four barks and the buds off of the, the bomb of Gillian. It's good for all kinds of sores, you know, in, if they get infected. People don't have sores like they used to, though, the children would have. And, uh, Burns, it's good for burns. I don't remember ever having a doctor when I was growing up, ever taking any doctor medicine. And I ain't much since. <laughs> I never have been in the hospital on just to go to visit. This is the mutton's teller. I guess what you call it, that's what I was called. Now I have to let this all melt before I put in the barks and things. This is the tree rosin now that I'm putting in. Now here goes the bark. This is the elder bark. I put a, I mixed a little bit of bark. This is the seven bark.
Well, what's it a blubbering over for, you reckon? Oh, Law, come here. <laughs> I'll see you will have to come. I didn't know it would do that. Never knowed it to do that. Can't now that be. Now, I don't reckon these uh, buds will make it come over. Do you think it will? I don't think. I think that'll take it down. Be done before we get it all in. Now, that cook's slow back here. Yeah, that's what it'll have to do. Well, that's already b hot as a far, that stuff is. This stove, I didn't know it was going to do that way. Get us so hot. No, some of you now better be learning how to make it. Because this is my life. This save is better than the, what you get, anything you can get out of the drugstore. Or what well, it used to be, but I don't use much out of the drugstore. I don't know. They might have something better. Don't know where they have or not. But I doubt it. I think the old remedies is the best. The flu. Yeah. Uh, nothing but hard liquor. Hard <laughs> corn liquor and uh, <laughs> I don't know nothing yeah, but flu. Yeah, if you can get yeah. you some real good hard corn liquor and make a ginger stir of that and get into bed and just sweat it out. Well you you'll yeah. break the flu. Yeah, you had it, you didn't break it. Yes, yeah, even before you went to wake. I got I thought I was dying. My feet got cold. <laughs> I got up out to bed. She's going to wake and uh, the doc told her to make me a hot Toddy, ginger stew, and you brought me a bowl of, bowl of Mountain Dew in there, hot. I drank that, and I come out from in there, buddy, the, the flu. Yeah, that a age addict flu, whatever. Yeah, yeah, I guess that's what that it was. That tough flu, buddy, I made sure. The master's calling me, you know, my feet got as cold as <laughs> ice, but I got up from there and standing up at the bed. But that brought it away from there, and I, I know that was good for you. And if you ever have the same age, you go and get this pork salad root. Yeah. And boil it down till the water turns red. Just boil all the fat. Take your big dose of sulfur before you do it a day or two for to drive it out your blood. Get in that water just about hot as you can stand it and take a good bath. And then grease and sulfur and lard if you can stand it. And that'll kill the I would kill the same me. Me and my cousin, two cousins, we had it. Uh, Jim Bradshaw used to come and spend the night with us, you know, and he'd scratch and scratch, and we caught that. Yeah. And where did my grandmother say, you all go and get this some pork roots here. We dug one of these just to fertilize sacks. Then we were on the farm, and we dug all kinds of pork roots, and she boiled it down, give us some of this sulfur, and molasses first two or three days before she give us this back. And we got in that tub, but and uh, it got the each too, and it like looked like it was gonna get me, you know. <laughs> Whips come out, but, but after that it won't no more each. Uh, it killed it. <laughs> yeah, it, it thought it killed that. So that's the remedy of uh, each. But people, children don't have that much now, do you? No, mm. I'm talking about that, no <laughs> That's one thing without a style. If it is, give it a different name. Mm -hmm. Oh, I told him about Walt. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you catch a snail coming out of his shell and rub the thing on that and uh, it'll remove the wall. <laughs> yeah, I tried it. What the hell? Uh, I don't want to you find these snails, they're all red out. They don't be snails all red out the shed. Yeah, and I rubbed rub that on there. Just rub your water on and just let him go. And he hit but it'll get real sore before it leaves. Real sore. What thing was on one of these things? And for the summer complaint, get your wild, uh, they call it wild tansy. Bruise that up and make a tea out of that. 
and drink it. Cold water, and it'll stop these cramps and uh, stop the air take. We have tried that, and it's successful. Making, we're going to demonstrate how to make some cancer. And of course, any medicine I make, I want some clover bloom in it. Red clover, white clover, purple clover. I like to use some kind of clover. It's a good blood purifier. If you can get your blood pure, it'll pick up the poisons out of your body and carry it out through your kidneys. And if you don't have a pure blood, you, you can't cure anything. Now this is good in any medicine. It's a red raspberry leaves here. It shows you a few red raspberries in here. And when a woman is, gets pregnant, she can fix some of this in a little squirrel vine and a little rattle weed with it and uh, keeps her from having morning sickness or sickness during the pregnancy. And when she gets ready to have a child, it probably come before she thinks about it. Sometimes they may not even get to the hospital. And these birds are very good to eat. What got me interested in the herb business is I was a freshman at North Carolina State in 1933. And I was on my way, I guess, to being an evolutionist. But then I got to seeing some of the things that these little ordinary weeds around the yard would do for you. And I was uh, getting insects and I was getting leaves to identify, to take back with me, and I looked down to my feet and I saw what the biggest ants I ever saw. I reached down and picked up the thing and it stung me on the ball of the finger. And that was the hardest thing I ever got. And this old man come out of this cabin and said, come on in the house and I'll put some stuff on it and take that pain away in about 20 minutes. Uh, we went in the old cabin and he rubbed some kind of save on it. And sure enough, in 20 minutes, that pain left and never hurt no more. And one day I said, you look like an Indian. He said, yeah, I'm a third bread Indian. Beat his chest and told me his name. I couldn't pronounce it, but everybody called him Indian Joe. I come to find out that he was curing people of all kinds of diseases. So I thought, well, the Medical Association will have all that in four or five years. He'll have it all. I thought they were looking for it. In four or five years, I seen it didn't look like the Medical Association was going to try to find out. They'd had plenty of opportunity to find out. So I began to go out there and take notes on the stuff. And that's how come me to know what to do with it. And it has worked good. This is slippery elm bark. It's, it's a good food. You can live off of that a long time. This is golden seal, yellow root, golden seal. It's good for anything that ails you. Good for the stomach or anything that ails you, and it's very strong. That's enough. My wife had cancer. That wasn't the first ones I treated. But she had it bad in 1959. The cancers was under her left arm. There was a cancer in her right breast as big as a marble. The cancer run back under her shoulder blade and run up into her neck. Old Doc Sykes told her it was too late. All she could do would be to take x-ray and she might live 18 months. So she agreed to take this treatment. She knew that I had used it before. So we uh, started her on this treatment and uh, every day we put the poultice on her. Every night we gave her a sweat bath. And uh, she drank four glasses of the herb medicine a day and six or eight glasses of juice. And she didn't eat any meat while she was taking this treatment. But she ate any vegetables she wanted and any fruits she wanted. And after two months, uh, the little cancer in the right breast was gone. But still, there was some cancer in her left breast. 
after six months, the one in the left breast was gone, all except it's these gone. packages of roots, cancer roots. In eight months, the roots were all gone. That was in 1959. And she's still going strong today. She's never had any more trouble. She went back to smoking. She went back to eating anything she wanted, and still she hasn't had no more cancer. Now, this ain't gonna be too strong. Looks pretty, don't it? Yeah, it got an amber color. I take care of them in Tennessee and here in McQuarrie County, Mount Vernon. They have a hard time getting in the hospital. You know, it takes a lot of money. Ain't many people got that anymore. They come and see me and talk with me, and I check them, and I, I'm not worried about waiting on them when they get in labor. Sometimes I give her aspirin if she can take them. Some don't need anything. Let them walk around and do as they please till their pains get so hard and then they go to bed. Some of them ain't in the bed 10 minutes left and some just barely get in the bed. And some has them before they get in the bed. Some has them in their trucks and cars. Two years ago, I delivered 5,204. And I've not counted records since. I've went and weighed on them so long and lose so much sleep, I'd think I never could make it. I've had to park long road and sleep while before I drive home. I delivered six one night. That's the most I ever delivered. Come on, you do your best this time. Just see how much you can put out. You can do it. Don't oh. hold back a bit. Oh. Oh. <laughs> It was trying that time the baby was. Yep, you'll burn down real hard. It'll pop out there, too. Just grit your teeth and burn in a long time, then get your breath dry again. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's hard. Get it out of there. Burn oh. hard. Oh, oh, oh is it coming? Sure. Oh. Oh. It's burning. Oh. We'll be somebody surprised. Oh, my God. first and you don't hardly ever see that happen. Most of the twins, one's feet first or butt first and the other head first. I let them lay there a few minutes 
till the cord quits beating. Then I cut them loose. And I hardly ever have to spank one to get it to cry. I give it warm, sweet water, and that cuts that mucus loose in its throat. And it satisfies them now. They'll go to sleep. I went down to the mining camp. When the mines be on a strike and wait on they wouldn't have a bite in the house. Lord, I've went for it. They didn't have a chair in the house, no clothes put on the baby. The churches make something give me baby clothes. And uh, some of these restaurants, they go in together and buy clothes for me. Sometimes they pay me $20, about a third of them. Sometimes I'll take chickens, pigs, or a load of groceries. It gives you a good feeling when you think you're helping somebody can't help themselves. 